Welcome to SNN Live. We're broadcasting live from our studio in Los Angeles, California. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and today on the program, we have Bob Goldstein from US Nuclear Corp. It's a publicly traded company with the symbol UCLE. And we have Jerry Simmons from Mifty, a private company. Jerry, Bob, welcome to SNN Live. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you much. Very much. It's great to have <clears throat> you both here. Bob, welcome back. Thank you. So, uh, First things first, let's get an overview of both companies. Let's okay. start with U.S. Nuclear Corp. Certainly. U.S. Nuclear Corp. is a spin-off from the Manhattan Project where they developed the first radiation safety instruments. Uh, we make radiation safety instruments for the national laboratories, for nuclear power plants, hospitals, and now we're putting them on drones as well so you can fly over your, uh, your facility and check it out. Mm -hmm. And Jerry Mifty? Mifty was founded over nine years ago as a fusion energy company, but more recently we've had a spin-off called MIFTEC. MIFTEC is in the business of producing radionuclides for nuclear medicine. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's dig a little deeper with MIFTEC. You know, who founded MIFTEC and why? Well, I and two others, myself, uh, Jerry Simmons, of course, and Dr. Afis Rahman and Arsad Mohammed founded MIFTEC uh, just several months ago because we felt that we needed to split off the two companies, same basic technology, but we split, spun off MIFTEC to focus and uh, concentrate, if you will, on producing medical isotopes and radionuclides. So tell me a little bit more about radionuclides and, and also the machine that you guys are looking to develop as well. Okay, well we're, we're looking to develop, we actually have a quasi prototype at the University of San, California, San Diego called the THOR. And that machine is a 1 MA or 1 milliamp machine. We can get 10 to the 10th neutrons. And 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 12th can produce radionuclides, commonly known as medical isotopes. If you go into a hospital, uh, a local hospital or any hospital, you'll find a nuclear medicine department. And they're dependent on, this, on radionuclides, medical isotopes. And there's well over 100 of these different kinds, anywhere from technetium to cobalt-50. It's used university, universally. But there is a shortage due to a number of things, supply and demand, and or that there's none, there's the current fission reactors around the world are being shut down for maintenance or obsoleted, such as in uh, Germany's case. Our proposal is to build a one, a two to five milliamp machine to produce radionuclides domestically to fill that gap and to save lives. Mm -hmm. That's what we're about. Mm -hmm. So then how is the, the machine that you're proposing to build at, MIF at MIFTI different than what's currently available? Okay, well today, like I said, they're using fission reactors, nuclear fission reactors, which have as a byproduct radiation. We don't use uh, uranium-235 or 238. We're using an isotope from hydrogen in seawater. So it's forever, it's free, and there's no radioactivity or very little radioactivity. That's a big difference right there. And then also, you know, tell us a little bit about the competition, you know, and, you know, how, how are, are machines similar to this being developed elsewhere? No. There's no machine in the world in, 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 that's being developed for this particular purpose that's not a fission reactor or one of the other methodologies. Mm -hmm. We're the only one in the world pursuing real fusion-based nuclear medicine. And, and what's the market opportunity? The here? market opportunity is... Currently, it's two to seven, two point seven billion dollars in the United States. That's straight from the NNSA, and five billion worldwide. And that's with the acute shortages. It will double or triple depending on what happens in China and India as far as the aging population goes. So another point that you actually alluded to a little earlier that I wanted to maybe get a little more commentary on is the fact that you're gonna. This is a machine that we want to have in the U.S and that might cut costs on production. Oh, Can you absolutely. explain that a little absolutely. bit more? Absolutely. Well, right now they have a transportation problem. It's all from offshore. There's several, Russia, Belgium, and South Africa. Canada was a major supplier, so you had to transport it very quickly because the shelf life is so short for to use or it dissipates in the efficacy of the product. So right now it's all from offshore. We intend on doing this domestically with U.S. nuclear's capabilities and experience in building machinery and to bring it to the hospitals and clinics and cut the cost of production and manufacturing by 50, up to 50 percent. And then, and Bob, you know, uh, Jerry just actually alluded to, the, right, <laughs> to yeah. this as well, yeah, but sure. you know, what, what is your vision for the strategic alliance? Well, so we're in this because they're development scientists and, and we're manufacturers and we're in the same physics space 
together. And so uh, we're jumping in to, to help out to, to build the machines. And these are, are you know, relatively small machines that can produce uh, nuclides instead of the several hundred million dollar uh, power plants that are doing it now. And so uh, we want to we wanna build these so that uh, Jerry can put them to use. Mm -hmm. And then Jerry, going back to you on this, you know, how, how long will it take to build the MythTech machine and reach production that's, stage? That's an excellent question. It's been all over the map, and it's it's really an economical question. Uh, it, the machine, the, the the components themselves are pretty much 90% off the shelf, so we don't have to redesign the wheel. The machine already exists, like I said at UCSD. So how long will it take? Right now, we estimate it to be between 24 and 36 months without factoring in any uh, necessary times, time that's required to, for FDA and NRC approvals. But in my uh, conversations with the FDA, I'm pretty sure that we can do this in tandem or at the same time in parallel as the machine is being produced. Once it starts being designed and produced by U.S. Nuclear, we can start the procedure for the, to, uh, along with the regulations and the standardization from the, U, uh, from the FDA and the NRC. The drug itself does not have to be reapproved. The machine, they don't approve the machines. The, the drugs are already approved, they're already in use. But we'd have to meet the regulations and the standards that are dictated by the FDA and the NRC. So 26, to, uh, pardon me, 24 to 36 months is the best guesstimate. But keep in mind, this is the first time in history this has ever been done by an uh, independent company and not a government agency. But we're pretty confident with our staff, current staff, and experience. We've been researching this at the various university laboratories for near 30 years. So we've been there and done that, and are pretty confident we can do this in 24 to 36 months. And Jerry, what are the barriers to entry? Well, we're in a unique position at the University of California. They, the research was actually has been done, been carried on for well over 25 to 30 years. And in that process, about nine years ago, we filed a patent for fusion energy, which was a shot at the moon. And it was just issued last two weeks ago. It took six, about six and a half years to get that patent. Very rare. It took a lot of work. The, the, further back, we, we were actually issued the patent for radionuclides. By we, I mean the University of California because the scientists, their full-time owners and so forth of MIFT, MIFTEC, are now have left and retired from the University of California. And our, one is a lead scientist, one is a chief scientist, one is a CFO, CO, one is a president. We actually have a number of scientists here and collaborators at the University of California, San Diego, where we have a contract and at the University of Nevada, Reno, where we have a contract. And we have the exclusive marketing rights worldwide issued to us each year by the University of California. And then once the revenue comes in, we will, have, at that point, be obligated to pay a small royalty to the, United, to the University of California Board of Regents in Oakland, California. Mm -hmm. But we're right now the exclusive licensees and have the rights to sub-license to others if that comes up, like uh, U.S. Nuclear or someone else wants to sublicense it in another country, we have the option to do that as well. And Jerry, what's your background? How did you get into all this? I started in this business, in the fusion energy business, around 20 years ago in the physics department at the University of California, Irvine, and co-founded from the science that was developed within the laboratory there at UCI and other universities, this company called Trialf Energy, which I was instrumental in raising uh, $500 million. I was recruited by this, the scientist uh, from UCI to start this company, which these scientists are still here, and I stayed on as CEO and so on and so forth of this company. So that's 20 years. Be previous to that, I was president of Moss International, a high-tech computer company. And previous to that, I was also a, 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 at Homeland Security in Washington, D.C. as a consultant for a year or so. And Bob, along with the strategic alliance that we discussed here today with MIFT, MIFTEC, you know, what are some of the other growth drivers at nu U.S. Nuclear Corp? Oh, thank you. Sure. There's uh, some important growth drivers. The, uh, we've developed uh, new tritium measurement equipment that can see uh, 300 times lower amounts of this dangerous material than our competitors. We have uh, uh, new uh, inroads in China where they're building 200 nuclear power plants. But what I'm really excited about right now is this opportunity to get into the medical world. We've been in this 
industrial safety, but medicine is really important. There's a worldwide shortage of nuclear medicine isotopes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Bob, where can our audience go and find more information about U.S. Nuclear Corp? USNuclearCorp.com. And Jerry for MIFTEC? MIFTEC.com. My name is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on this SNN Live. And we're broadcasting live from our studio in Los Angeles, California. With me again has been Bob Goldstein from U.S. Nuclear Corp., publicly traded company with the symbol UCLE, and Jerry Simmons from MIFTEC, a private company. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you.